Hey guys, Dan with Kane Custom Garage. And today I thought we'd take a look at the PM Canadian chainsaws that I have in my collection. I got three of them. I got a 187, I got this 270, and then we have this Skill Corporation, which is actually made by PM Canadian. It's a PM 340. So I thought we'd sort of take a look at them, go over, go over a little bit of the history of the company, and then uh, we'll fire these beasts up and cut some wood with them. I've never cut a piece of wood with this one since I restored it, so that ought to be fun. And then this guy, you've seen this guy cut, but I got it running and put a carb kit in it, and so she runs better now. So yeah, let's take a look. Okay, guys. So here are my PM Canadian chainsaws. They're really cool chainsaws, um, made in Canada, of course. And they're sort of hard to find down here in the States because I guess they weren't very popular down here. But uh, anyways, I've got this 270 that I restored. It's a 95cc chainsaw. And then this 187 is one that um, I did a series on restoring it, if you want to call it that, and getting it running. I guess you would call it a sympathetic restoration because I left all the original paint and everything on it. We just we just did what we needed to do to get it running, which was basically take the whole thing apart because it was nasty. And so, yeah. So there's that one. And then we got this little um, 340. And uh, the, little, the little description is sort of deceiving because these are actually a 69cc chainsaw. So little, little saw, big power. And then here's my little sign. This is just a reproduction, but this is what the old sign for Canadian chainsaws looked like. And there's a, um, oh, actually, this one guy that has a YouTube channel, I'll put his channel name on here, but he actually has the original sign that they made copies of this off of. I'll, like I said, I'll put his um, YouTube channel on here. He's a pretty cool guy. His name's Joe. And then this is another one of those little PM 340s. This is the one that uh, Andrew sent down and we're gonna fix it all up and raffle it off. But yeah, they're neat sort of futuristic looking chainsaw. But anyway, so the history behind these things is sort of one I wanted to talk to as well in this video. So let's do that. Okay, so here it is guys. Here's that history of chainsaws book. I always think sort of cool. You, you guys should get one if you can find one. I think you can get them online, eBay and those type of places. But anyways, here's uh, Power Machinery. This little story about those guys in here. I won't quote it word for word. I'll just sort of give you what I, what I gather from the whole story. And so anyways, so Power Machinery Company started making... Uh, table saws I guess like in 1943 44 after the war and then I guess they wanted to get into the chainsaw market so they came up with the chainsaw and uh, it was a one-man saw and it sold pretty good for you know a few years it wasn't any of these guys it was a big old heavy beast called the rocket I think and anyways, um, they went along and, you know, they were doing okay, but nothing spectacular. And then, uh, I guess right around 59, 60, don't quote me on that, but I think that was when, so, so the Canadian, the PM Canadian company was in Vancouver, Canada, along with Pioneer IEL. And that's about when, um, OMC bought out Pioneer IEL and they basically shut down the factory there in Vancouver and moved everything to Peterborough, Ontario. And so all of a sudden these guys that were working for IEL were basically out of a job because not a lot of them wanted to relocate to um, you know the other side of the country which is in Ontario, Canada. So they went to work for PM Canadian so then, uh-oh, big diesel going by. And so then, 
they set about designing a new saw for the uh, pulp industry, the pulp wood industry, which was pretty big over there in like um, Canada. And I guess they were sort of targeting the French Canadians because they were, they were the ones that were doing all the pulp mill cutting and the pulp wood cutting. And so that's why they called it the Canadian with the, with the uh, I-E-N like that. And so anyways, they came out with this 270, which is a 95cc chainsaw. Big old beast, but it's cool. I love how they look. They're beautiful old saw. And then a few years later, and like, so this one's a 61, 62, they made those for a few years. And then a few years later, they sort of came up with a totally different design. And believe it or not, this is also a 95cc chainsaw, but it's a few pounds lighter than the 270. So they had the 187, and then I think they had a 177 too, but I think they were both 95ccs. And so yeah, this is the one. This is the one that we uh, gave a sympathetic restoration to on a few of my other videos. We just left the original paint on it and everything, got it running. I put a I put a kit in the carburetor, Andrew, one of the ones that you sent me. So, thank you, buddy. That got her running good. And then I got this skill. And so yeah, so another part of that history. Um, so. refer back to the book here so yeah so yeah in 62 um, the PM Canadian company Lawrence Killam he was the uh, head cheese I guess he accepted an offer from Bristol Arrow and so then they bought him out and they ran it for a few years and then in 69 they sold out to the skill corporation and so that's why you see these guys that are the orange ones branded as a skill. And I can't remember what model number this one was. It was like a 1631 or something like that. Don't quote me on it. And then that's why you see, so see this, here's the uh, top cover for one of these 187s, but the skill version. So this is a skill, it was a 1661. So see it would have had this orange top cover instead of the Canadian one so yeah that's pretty much the gist of it pretty cool old company made some beautiful chainsaws and so now let's take a look and what we'll do is um, we'll get the 270 running we'll get the 187 running and then we'll get that little 340 running and we'll cut some wood with them. I got some wood over here. So yeah, let's do that. Oh, another innovative feature I sort of wanted to show you on these 187 and later ones. So they went to a they went to a stamp steel fuel tank. See on the back here to save weight. Sort of interesting. You don't see that too much. And then it's sort of interesting, I had this part saw. I think it was the 177 model, but the clutch cover is stamped steel too. Sort of, sort of unusual for a chainsaw, so it's stamped steel, and then it just has this block of um, aluminum riveted to it for the um, bar clamp. Pretty crazy, huh? So yeah, and then here's one of the, here's one of the uh, starter housings that has the actual logo on it. I thought that was pretty cool. And then yeah, see this one has the stamped fuel tank too. Pretty cool, pretty cool, innovative design. And these little 1630, are these... Um, 340s and 330s are pretty, pretty cool little design. Pretty innovative. See how compact that is? They got the air cleaner in there, flat like that, and then it's got a little air box. 
But yeah, 69 cc's packed in there. That's cool. I'll show you under, oh. I'll show you under the hood of this 272 just for the heck of it. You want to see it. I know you do. It's pretty cool. It has a pretty cool looking air cleaner. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. The air deflector for the cylinder. You got sort of a cool looking muffler. Looks like an alien or something. Okay. beast now the old 270 now I haven't cut wood with this one before guys so let's see what she does whoops ignition was off for this little guy.
story of uh, PM Canadian, the uh, power machinery company, Chainsaws of Vancouver, Washington. Pretty cool old chainsaws. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks, Andrew, for this shirt. Andrew at Butler Outdoors Canada. Look at that. That's cool. Thank you, Andrew. But yeah, I'm going to get this carnage cleaned up behind me. Look at that mess. But yeah, that was fun. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.